Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes. I've got another project tutorial for you today. I was approached by our local children's museum and asked if I could recreate this part. Now, the technique I came up with involved, of course, Fusion 360 and 3D printing, but it also involves some Play-Doh. Now, I found this worth sharing and I think you're gonna find the technique quite interesting as well. Now, from what I understand, the cylindrical piece is part of a bigger assembly that operates kind of like one of those old time music players where there are these grooves in their precise locations. And as the cylinder spins, it causes a certain tune or melody to be played. At first, I thought, OK, this should be straightforward, just a cylindrical extrusion with some holes in it. But when I came to design it, I realized it was going to be a bit of a challenge getting the grooves in their precise locations around a cylinder. My initial thought was to measure the distance from each groove to the top of the cylinder, create a reference point, and then measure the angle from the reference point to each of the grooves. But then I thought, there's got to be a simpler way. And that's when I turned to Play-Doh. I rolled out the dough until I had a flat, somewhat consistent thickness, and then came in with a square and a ruler to cut some straight edges. Next, I brought my cylinder and placed it on the guides that I made, and then gently rolled it across, making sure not to slip, and also keeping straight with my guidelines. You don't want to go too deep, but not too light either. You want to make sure that you can still see your grooves. And you can always come back in with a little file or just some sharp edge and just trace over your grooves so that you can see them more clearly. To double check your work, you'll want to measure between two repeating features, and this should give you your circumference. In my case, I measured the diameter of my cylinder, which came to 19.3 millimeters. I know that circumference equals pi times diameter, so that's 3.14 times 19.3, which equals 60.6, .6, and that should be this distance. As you can see, I'm right in the ballpark. I can take a picture of this, bring it into Fusion 360, and calibrate it to be exact which is exactly what I did. And since it's a lot easier to dimension my features on a flat plane rather than on a curved cylinder, what I did was I applied a little trick where I jumped into the sheet metal environment, created a cylinder, flattened it out, and then made my sketches and my extrusions. And after that, I refolded it back up. And this allowed my extrusions or these grooves to be in their precise locations. And after cleaning up some edges and adding a few fillets, I had a replica of my cylinder ready for 3D printing. I delivered my cylinder to the museum and fully expected them to come back and say, well, we need to tweak here and there to get it to fit. But they actually rolled back and said that it worked out perfectly. Now, I seldom get designs to work out on the first try, so I was pretty excited to hear that everything fit on the first attempt. Now, for those interested in seeing how I approach this in Fusion 360, I'm gonna next jump into a step-by-step -step tutorial. And if you enjoy my teaching style, then check out my website at desktopmakes.com where I have full courses on designing for 3D printing with Fusion 360 that I'm sure you'll enjoy and you'll find a lot of value in. All right, thumbs up if you enjoyed this and make sure to subscribe for more content like this because I have a lot more coming. We'll start with the sketch on our XY plane. So let's go to sketch, create sketch, choose the XY or green red plane. And we're gonna put a circle down. So let's go to circle, uh, center diameter circle. We'll start it right at the origin. Uh, so click once, release. And let's give this a diameter that's the same as our cylinder, which is 19.3 millimeters. We'll hit enter twice. Let's zoom in. And the next few steps are going to be very similar to my uh, how to wrap text around a cylinder tutorial that I did. So if you watch that one, um, the next few steps are going to be a bit familiar. Uh, we'll create a line that we're going to start right at the origin and go straight up and hit the check mark and we're going to offset that line. So back to the sketch menu and down to offset. We'll select that line and we're gonna give this an offset of just one millimeter and click OK. All right, next let's trim that arc in the middle. So we'll go down to trim from the sketch menu and we'll just select that little arc. See it highlights red and hit escape next and let's make these two lines construction lines. So we'll select it, hit X and do the same thing with the second one. All right, we can now stop the sketch and we're ready to jump into the sheet metal environment to 
turn this into a flange. So let's go from where it says model down to sheet metal. And we're going to go to the create menu and choose flange. We're going to select our circle, drag the arrow up, and we're going to type in a dimension of 71 millimeters, which was the, the height of my cylinder. But let's take a look at this dialog box to see some of the options here. Notice that on thickness where it says side one, well, that basically says that my circumference here, um, that's going to be that inside edge of that cylinder. If I change it to side two, it's going to follow the outside. So the uh, cylinder, basically, the thickness gets added on the inside. Or we have the option of choosing symmetric, where that circumference is basically right in the middle and, and material gets added to both sides. All right, what I want is for that dimension to be on the outside because that's how I measured my cylinder. So I'm going to change this from symmetric to side two, and we see that the blue is on the outside. Uh, direction is going to be one side, but we do have some options here, just like the extrude menu. Any operation is new body, and we'll click OK. Next, we're going to take this cylinder and flatten it out so that we can precisely put in where our little divots are going to go. Uh, to do that, we first have to create an edge here because we can't flatten out a curved surface. So what we'll do is we'll select this uh, surface here, hit E for extrude. We're going to change the operation from cut to join, and we're just going to come out just a tiny bit. So 0 0.3 millimeters will work, and you see that little edge there. So again, operation is joined. We'll click OK. And now we can go to Modify, go to Unfold, and we're going to select that surface. And notice that it unfolded. We get this dialog box. Make sure unfold all bends is checked. Click OK. We'll zoom out and let's go to a back view. And basically that's our cylinder just rolled out. I want to point something out here. If I select this edge, notice that the length is 52.71 millimeters. Now if you recall my diameter was 19.3 millimeters and if I roll it out it, that edge should be the circumference which would be 19.3 times pi which should equal 60.6. .6. So there's an issue there and it has to do with the thickness of my flange here uh, that I made. So with uh, Fusion 360, I guess there's just some um, rules and assumptions that go into effect that you have the ability to change. Um, basically, it, it follows the, what the regular behavior would be if you actually took a piece of sheet metal and rolled it out and how that gets distorted and affected. Uh, I don't really understand it completely, but I do know that the thinner we make this, the more accurate uh, representation we get. So to do that, we can go to modify down to sheet metal rules and I'm going to hover it where it says steel, click on the little pencil and I'm going to change this from uh, two millimeters. Yours may say something different. I'm going to go make it pretty thin, uh, uh, 0 0.1 millimeters and I'll click save and notice what happens. Well, automatically you see that it gets really flat, but let's go to that back view again and I'm gonna select that edge. Uh, actually, we have to click close first here. Now if I select this edge, it's at 59.285 from 52. Remember that we did take off that little arc, one millimeter arc, so that puts us in the ballpark of 60, uh, roughly 60 or so millimeters, what should equal our circumference. Okay, so now that we've got that uh, out of the way, let's bring in our image of our Play-Doh so that we can go ahead and uh, sketch in our extrusions. I'll click on Insert, Attach Canvas. Uh, my face is just going to be the surface here of my uh, rolled out cylinder. And in my image, I'll click on Select Image and navigate to where I have it and double click on it. I'm going to take it and rotate it 90 degrees so it's facing the right way. I need to flip it, uh, do a horizontal flip, and I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to calibrate it. So to calibrate it, we'll right-click on our image here, down to Calibrate. And I know that this uh, hole here is the same one that's repeated here as I rolled it. So I'm going to click on one and click on the other one, and I know that that distance is going to be my uh, circumference, so that's 60.6 millimeters, and hit enter, and that calibrates my image. 
All right, now I can just move it into place by right-clicking on the image and going to Edit Canvas. And I'm going to move it so that it will actually be right here. So these edge lines, uh, basically I'm just going to be uh, worried that uh, these edges here are kind of lined up and well actually what I need to do is just make sure the bottom is lined up uh, because since it's gonna be rolled the distance from the edge doesn't really matter I just have to make sure that these three elements or these four uh, are within my uh, my rectangle there and then so I'll line up the edges and then click OK and now I'm just going to sketch on top of this. So I'll uh, create a sketch on this surface. And I'm going to quickly do this because this is uh, going a bit long. So I'm not going to take too much time in dimensioning everything. But I'll make that for millimeters. And then there's actually um, another circle on the other side here. And that's going to be four millimeters as well. Now, I'll dimension this because I know that this is going to be halfway. Um, this is sort of half a revolution here. So I will hit D for them. Actually, let's make them horizontally um, equal. So make that horizontal to that. I'm going to dimension this from the bottom edge. And I know that that's seven millimeters. And I'll dimension them from each other. Uh, I know that my circumference is 60.6 so I'm just gonna take that and divide it by 2 I'm just gonna type that right in and hit enter and that gives it the 30.3 uh, millimeters apart uh, and now I'm gonna just make some slots here for these so I'm gonna go to sketch uh, down to slot and we're gonna do an overall slot and I'm just gonna click up here click down here I'm just tracing these out right now uh, I'm gonna do the same thing for this one just trace these out and you do want to dimension them in um, I'm gonna quickly move through this I'll show you one trick though if I hit D for dimension and I select uh, this um, edge here you know what let's change the color because this blue on the blue is not working out here so let's go to display settings I'm gonna go to environment and let's go to dark sky okay now I get a, a purple which looks better if I hit D for dimension and I dimension between the bottom edge and this slot here, notice how it automatically goes to this point. Uh, or if, if it's a circle, it would go right to the center. But I'm, that's not how I'm measuring it. I'm measuring it from the bottom uh, of that arc. So I want it to be tangent to that arc. So if I hit escape uh, and hit D for dimension again, this time I right click and I choose pick circle slash arc tangent now I can select that bottom part and it's gonna uh, be tangent to uh, that arc so I can now get a dimension between that and the bottom edge and that's at 53 uh, millimeters which is um, just exactly what I measured so I'll type that in okay you can go ahead and um, you know dimension these to get them locked into place I'm gonna cheat and take a shortcut here I'm just gonna select everything and I'm gonna hit the fix uh, constraints here and that's just gonna lock everything into place so uh, again just a shortcut here so I can move through this alright I'm gonna stop sketch and let's go back now to our photo booth environment I'm going to get rid of the canvas for now and let's take this and I'm gonna give it some thickness now because I want to be able to extrude these in a bit so what I'm going to do is hit E for extrude select my surface and I don't want to forget about this little edge here as well and I'm gonna extrude that out let's go just like two millimeters and I'm gonna change cut to join click OK now I can go in and hit E for extrude select each of these spaces and I'm gonna go in negative 1.5 and that's gonna be a cut and I'm gonna click OK I forgot one thing so I'm gonna click on that feature the extrude feature bring in that sketch oh it's already in I'm just gonna hit control and hold and select this circle as well and click OK 
All right, now that I have that, I'm going to click on Refold Faces and it's gonna fold everything back up uh, with the holes in their right locations. And the next thing we have to take care of is going to be this part here. So we don't wanna leave this opening, we wanna fix that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this face here. And the beautiful thing with Fusion is just the delete feature is just so wonderful. It, look, I'm just hitting delete and it's completely healing everything. So now I'm going to take this edge or this surface, hit E for extrude. And for distance, uh, I'm going to choose two object. And my object is going to be the opposite surface there. I'm going to go to chain faces and select extend faces and change the operation from cut to join, click OK. It looks a little wonky, but again, watch this. I'm gonna select the surface, hit delete, select that surface, hit delete. Let's go on the inside and fix that as well. And it just heals so nicely. I love the way the delete feature works. It just kind of reads your mind and knows what you want. Let's fix the bottom as well. Delete that, delete that. Uh, let's check the inside. Uh, let's see here. We have this edge here. We'll clean that up as well. All right, we're looking good. Okay, if I select this edge, so it's only giving me half. Let's see if I just select this surface and delete it. All right, that edge is gone. Okay, now it gives me the whole, it selects the whole uh, outer edge. And look at that. So that's 9.65 as the radius, which is half of. 19.3 so we're looking good one last thing we have to fix is that inside the diameter uh, over here the hole uh, we need to make that nine millimeters so this thickness has to be nine millimeters so what I'm gonna do is hit Q and select oops let's do that again undo all right I'm gonna select this inner face I'm gonna hit Q so I can basically just drag this face in or out to make it as thick or as thin as I want. Uh, and what I'm going to do is overbuild. So I'm just going to make it um, bigger than I know I need it. Click OK. And then I'm going to create a sketch on top, a C for circle. And I'm just going to make that circle my 9 millimeters that I want. And then stop sketch. And now I'm going to hit E for extrude. Take this and I'm just going to extrude it all the way down. Uh, go from cut to, or actually I'm going to keep it at cut, distance is going to be all, click OK, and there's my cylinder. So I have now my holes in their right places, and uh, my outer diameter here uh, is, or I'm sorry, my outer circumference, that edge is 9.65, which is exact uh, radius that I want, and that inner is 4.5, which is exactly what I want. One last thing I'm going to do is just apply a fillet to these uh, edges here. So I'm just going to select all of them. And I got one and one more here. I'm just going to do a one millimeter fillet and click OK. And there is my part recreated. So uh, all I have to do now is just send this to the printer and I'm all set.